So, I'm about to tell you the story, something that happened over the last week, and though I'm pretty sure I'm getting the details right, I can't for the life of me imagine that it's true, but I've been over it a few times and it seems to be completely true. Uh, the reason why I struggle with this is it just strikes me as so absurd that I can't imagine, I, I keep going over the details thinking I'm missing something or I got something wrong. Now, if you're an atheist and you hear this story and I do have something wrong, let me know. You know, um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm telling you the God's honest truth about what went down a few days ago. But as the story comes out of my mouth, I struggle with it because I'm like, how could, how could anything this stupid have occurred? <laughs> but it looks like that's what happened. So this is guy, Schuyler Fiction. And Schuyler Fiction is an atheist. He's loosely associated with the non-sequitur crew. Um, I don't know him very well. Matter of fact, I'm not sure if I've ever interacted with him at all. But I've seen him on some of their live chats and I've seen him on... Not necessarily on their show, but when they have after shows, I've seen him in the group of people talking. and So I assume he's just kind of loosely associated with them. He's just one of the atheists who float in and out of their, their live feeds. Prior to this week, I don't think I'd, <clears throat> don't think I'd heard of him. So there's this other guy, Matt Powell. And I guess you could say he's kind of a criminal. What? I guess he's kind of a criminal. No, <laughs> what? I said, fine, all right, fine. I guess you can say he's kind of a Christian. Fine, I admit it. He labels himself a Christian, so technically he's a Christian. <laughs> as embarrassing as that seems to me, and as painful as that, as that is to admit, I guess he's kind of a Christian. Technically, he believes at least some of the same things that I believe. Um... I guess we just read the Bible and came to kind of different conclusions about what the message, the underlying message actually is. So, if you know him at all, you know him from, he's become relatively famous in the last few weeks for espousing this form of um, anti-homosexuality anti that's pretty intense, actually. Even for a fundamentalist Christian, even for someone who's like a literalist of the Bible, it's still pretty intense. He, he believes that homosexuals should be put to death for the sin of sodomy. And he also believes that this is what the Bible teaches and this is good in the sight of God. And that God is 100% behind his gay-hating agenda. And he's going, my boy, <laughs> preach. Uh, I came, you know, suffice it to say, I come to a different conclusion reading the exact same Bible. But I'm not bringing this up to debate the, debate Matt Powell per se. I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer. He's obviously deceived and mistaken in the intensity of his hatred, and it's somewhat irrational. And I'm not even going to go into scriptural justification. It's just suffice it to say that I don't agree with him at all. Now. As the story goes, Skylar Fiction was, was had him on his YouTube channel. Now, this is where it gets weird, because as far as my understanding is, and I don't see how it could be any different, he had him on his YouTube channel to combat the ideology, to discuss with him his views on homosexuality, so that he could present to him why that's rooted in ignorance, and why that's not a good idea, and why that's not correct, and get him to try to change his mind, or at least combat the ideology. And YouTube, in their infinite wisdom, has decided, or at least decided last week temporarily, that combating ideology is exactly the same thing as espousing the ideology. <laughs> yeah, that's what they decided, and they struck, you know, Skylar Fix's channel and removed it for a period of time. I don't know the details. I guess they got they they went and appealed, and they got the channel back on the on air. But the fact that it got struck at all, and the fact that it got eliminated even for a period of time, however brief, strikes me as completely and utterly absurd. That's why I can't wrap my brain around the fact that I'm getting giving you the details correctly. But I've been over it a few times, and it looks like I am. Now, I can't think of any better way to underscore the absurdity of hate speech codes. I mean, that's exactly what YouTube decided. Somebody somewhere, and how they came to this conclusion, I don't know, decided to remove a channel 
because it was combating speech that was hateful. And I guess when he combated the speech, he used clips <laughs> because he can't even say what the guy said. I don't know exactly how that works. But, you know, I, I can't for the life of me understand the intellectual process behind it. Now, to be perfectly crystal clear, I'm not comfortable with hate speech codes in principle, in general, at all, really. I recognize that YouTube is a community and it's a privately owned entity. And there does need to be some limits on, I guess, what people can say. But when it comes to these type of things, I tend to be more of a free speech absolutist. For a lot of different reasons. But most importantly, if you're talking about hateful, hateful ideology, if you're talking about a hate speech code, the real problem with the hate speech code in principle is that if you just take away someone's right to say something, you have done nothing to combat the underlying ideology. Nothing. You've served no purpose. You've just, you've just denied somebody the right to express himself. That's all you've done. The ideology, the poison that it represents to the community remains unchanged. Matter of fact, it may be potentially more dangerous because it slips off into darkness. Now the person still has the same hateful beliefs and nobody knows what they are. And he cultivates them in private, in the dark, in secret, potentially making the whole thing, situation much, much worse. There's only one path forward if you were talking about combating ideology, hateful ideology of any kind. There is only one potential path forward, as difficult as it may be. And it's exactly what Skylar Fiction was doing. You, you engage the person and you try to combat the beliefs and you say, look, this is exactly why that isn't the right way to handle people. This is, this is, that isn't the right way to, to handle homosexuality. Let's, let's change it. Let's just say someone like... They had a channel where they hate gay people, or hate Jewish people. They have a channel where they're talking about how Jews run the media and Jews are evil and XYZ PDQ about Jews. You remove the channel. You've done nothing to combat their belief system at all. At all. You haven't changed their belief system. You've just suppressed its expression. It still exists. The hateful ideology still exists. It now exists in secret, in the dark, suppressed. I can't imagine that's any better for the society at large. Honestly, I think that's a hundred times more dangerous. Like I said, as difficult as it may seem, the only way to combat hateful ideology and hateful ideas is by combating the ideas, getting the person to change their mind or change their heart. There is no other path forward. Su Suppressing the speech doesn't work. It does not remove the poison from the community. It just pushes the poison into darker corners of the community where it grows in secret. That's it. That's really all that's happening. So I'm against hate speech codes in principle, in general. And I can think of no clear-cut exa clear example of the imbecility of them in practice than this particular example. It's another problem with hate speech codes. Who decides what's hate speech? Who decides? Obviously, the people at YouTube can't decide because they can't think clearly. They can't tell the difference between somebody, you know, saying, you know, bringing up something in the context of trying to engage and combat it and bringing it up to espouse it. They can't tell the difference at all. So what makes you think that they'll be trustworthy on any other subject under the sun? I mean, I don't want to go so far as to say they're idiots, but they're idiots. What, how else can you describe it? How else can you... What else can you... What other conclusion could you possibly come to? And when you give hate speech codes power in to put them in the hands of imbeciles, they're going to decide it in ways that are mind-numbing. There's things going on in England right now. There was a situation, I think, three months ago where a guy is facing jail time because he violated the hate speech codes because he, he trained his dog to make, I don't know, Hitler jokes or jokes about Auschwitz or something. I didn't actually see the video, but I'm sure it's relatively harmless. Certainly not. We don't want to live in the type of society where people go to jail for making jokes that are sick or off color. But that's where we're headed. Because that's England. And that was happening three months ago. And if this, if this doesn't scare you in terms of 
how people in power cannot be trusted to decide what is hate speech and what is not, if this doesn't make any clear-cut case as to why they can't be trusted, I can't think of any better example. They can't be. They're ultimately going to be the ones deciding what's hate speech and what's not. And I can tell you exactly that where that will lead. You know? So, anyways, that's my two cents. And yeah, like I said, nobody asked me, but if I waited for people to ask me to make videos, never make a single solitary video. That's all I got to say on the subject. Amen.